Hello and welcome to the Football Parliament podcast, your one-stop destination for all your football debates, opinions and discussions. We are just 10 days away from the beginning of Euro 2021 or Euro 2020 as they call it for marketing reasons. Today I'm taking the predictor challenge which is available on Euro's official website. Uh, a lot of YouTube pages have done this already and today I'm also going to following going to be following the trend starting with the group stages it will also uh, include the knockout stages and ultimately i'm also going to predict who wins the entire tournament what will my finals be i might also include certain aspects like who will be the golden wall winner who will be the golden boot winner uh you know dark horses for the tournament and other such stuff so uh also make sure to hit the subscribe button because it'll be a big source of motivation for all of us here at the football parliament podcast Let's get started with the video. Starting with Group A, Switzerland, Turkey, Wales, Italy. This group is actually a bit closer than people what people make out it to be. Switzerland are a good side. They've uh, cleared the group to reach the knockout stages in quite many international tournaments of late. Turkey, they've got some real talent and some really good players in there with the likes of, you know, Demiral, Chal- Chalanolu and, you know, Soyuncu. They also surprised the Dutch team uh, the last time they met them. I think it was the Nations League or just a friendly, but regardless, they are a very good team. Wales, I think they've got some good individual talent, but as a unit, I think that <clears throat> they are the relatively weaker side in this group. Uh, not a way So I'm going to go for Italy as the favourites to win this group followed by Turkey will be the team that I think will finish second ahead of Switzerland. Just a minute. Switzerland, I think that they will finish third and Wales for the unfortunate fourth position. Why is this not happening? Just a minute. Yeah. Wales at fourth, Switzerland at third. Also, the first two teams get guaranteed qualification into the knockout stages, but it's not like the third place team is directly knocked out. Four of the best third place teams also get a chance to uh, play in knockout stages is the way the format is. Nevertheless, let's move to Group B, where Belgium stand out as clear favorites. I don't think they're as good as they probably were in, you know, the 2018 World Cup. They had many players in their peaks say Eden Hazard, which was the silver ball winner in the World Cup. He is probably a lot weaker right now. Nevertheless, looking at the other teams, Russia, they had a great, great 2018 World Cup, made it to the quarters ahead of Spain. But, uh, you know, it was a home tournament. They had a lot of home supporting. If you look at the other two teams, Denmark, they are a quality side. They've got some really good players who are playing at the top European level with Andreas Christensen, uh, Christian Eriksen, you know, other such, Simon K, I think as well. So, other such players. Finland, if I'm not wrong, it's their first ever Euros. Uh, they are a good team. They are a team of, uh, they're a team that are better than individual players rather than being, wait, let me rephrase that. They're better as an entire unit rather than individual players. They're a team of fighters. And I really would like to see, you know, a dark horse story from Finland over here. But to predict, I think I'll go for Denmark a second and Finland over Russia, which would be quite an accomplishment considering it's their first ever uh, Euro major tournament. Right. Moving on to Group C, Austria, Macedonia, Ukraine, uh, Netherlands. Netherlands, I think, uh, look, it's the Euros and anything can happen over here. I'm going to make a bold prediction over here by placing Ukraine over Netherlands. I think Ukraine are a very good team. They've had a long-term manager. I think Andrei Shevchenko is the manager since the past four or five years now. They've got some really good players. And Netherlands, on the other hand, you might say have got good players themselves. Memphis Depay, Wijnaldum, all of these top players playing in top tier of Europe. They don't have Virgil van Dijk. The biggest issue that I have with Netherlands is their management. I think they're still with Frank de Boer, who is a pathetic manager, if I'm not being too harsh on him, but it is the way it is, and I will go for a surprise first-place position for Ukraine. 
but I still do feel like Netherlands have got the quality players to finish second. Uh, for third place, I'll go for Austria. I don't rate them as much as you know the other teams that are just a level off the top teams. They have got certainly certain good players, but then I just don't feel that Austria are good enough to finish in the top two in this group. North Macedonia will take the fourth place and will miss out on the knockout stages. Right then, three groups done, three left to go. Scotland, England, Croatia and the Czech Republic. I think this one is a bit more obvious. England will uh, take the first place because, you know, they've got a great squad. Just one of the best squads in world football, actually. Second would be Croatia. Croatia did defeat England in the 2018 World Cup, but I don't think that... I definitely think that England are a lot better right now than they were in 2018. And Croatia are a lot weaker right now than they were in 2018. I think many of Croatia's players, Perisic, Modric, were in their peaks in the 2018 World Cup. Right now, they've, you know, stumbled a little. England have just increased the power, particularly with young players like Mount, Foden, Sancho coming in. Yes, for third place, I will... Uh, you know what, I'm going to go for a bit of surprise over here. I'll go for Scotland over Czech Republic, which would, you know, make a bit of... Pe make people laugh a bit, but I think Scotland, uh, it's just a gut feeling. I will go for Scotland at number three over the Czech Republic. Two groups left. This one, right, Poland, Spain, Sweden, Slovakia. This group is actually quite close as well, because if you see Poland are a good team, you could say they're a bit over-reliant on certain players like Lewandowski. Spain, they are they'll be a very interesting team to see. They've obviously taken 24 players instead of 26. No players from, you could say, the biggest club from Spain. Sweden are a good team. I think Zlatan Ibrahimovic is injured, if I'm not wrong. But even without him, they've got some good players. Slovakia, I think I'll give them the fourth place over here. They are a good side themselves. But looking at the other three teams, I just feel that, I don't know. Oh, Poland, Spain, Sweden, which one shall come third? I think Spain will most definitely finish in the top two. That's a bit too given. I'll just give, uh, I'll just give Spain this top spot. And I'll go for Sweden as the second place finish. Poland is third. Let's see which four third place teams also make it to the round of 16. Moving on to the group of death. This one's going to be really, really exciting. It is the group that all neutral, you know, football fans are going to be looking out for. Not so for Hungary fans. I really feel for them because they've got absolutely no chance in this group. I mean, Hungary aren't going to make it into the round of 16. It's something, like, even if they make it to the round of 16, that would be one of the best fairy tale stories because against them are... Portugal, who looks stronger than ever right now. They are the defending champions and they had a lot weaker squad in 2016. So if they could win it with that squad in 2016, I think they can definitely, you know, make it to the further stages with, with such an improved squad. France, defending world champions. Germany, the last tournament for the manager, Josh Blow. I think that he'll give us everything. The players will give their everything for the manager. They also have a few of the improving players. You could see with these three Chelsea players who have just been uh, given the medals for the Champions League. All three of them are quite good. Also recalls for certain players who had been abandoned for the national team. Like you could see Muller, I think even Hummels is in the mix. This one's a bit tough to predict. You know what, I'm going, I'm just, I've just got this feeling that Germany will uh, win these both the games against, sorry, not both the game, the game against Hungary. And also, they will collect good enough points against Portugal and France. I'm going to go for a very, you know, unpopular prediction over here. I'm going to go for Portugal, Germany and France. Yes, this is the mix that I'm going to go for. Uh, people would think that France, the current world champions, are a bit of nailed on over here, even with the new latest striker Karim Benzema coming in but let's see which are the four best third place teams that do make it I think France will be one of them I just feel that this group is going to be so competitive and 
so evenly distributed apart from uh, Hungary that all three teams will qualify for the next round. Along with France, I'm also going to go for Poland. I'm also going to go for Switzerland. And uh, do I go for Finland, Austria, Scotland? If I look at the groups, I feel that Finland and just the fact that they are a really good team. Yes, I will go for Finland. Is Yep. Right, then next, how do we move to the knockout stages? We press. Now they will auto-generate a draw according to the predictions that I have given. So, yes, it's completely a hypothetical situation. It might or might not happen. But the first match in the round of 16 is Belgium versus Poland. Now, this is going to be a very interesting match. Two of the best strikers in world football, Robert Lewandowski and Robert Lukaku, going head-to-head -head against each other. I think both of them are very good squads. Uh, Belgium are a bit weaker than what they were, say, in 2018, as I've already mentioned. But I still feel that they have got the individual quality to make it to the next round. Yes, I'll go for Belgium. Italy and Netherlands is another very interesting fixture very early in this uh you know knockout stage i feel that italy have had consistent manager for say a few years now mancini they've got very underrated players in their squad with so the likes of pellegrini and some other you know those who are playing for is uh, inter milan i just feel like they're a well drilled squad they play some good football and i will back italy to go ahead of the Dutch team in the round 16. Portugal Switzerland is the next matchup. I think Portugal are just one of the favorites for this tournament. Switzerland not so. Straight up I'm gonna go for Portugal. Croatia and Sweden is an interesting matchup because you know these both are teams that have fallen you could say a bit especially with Croatia. I'm gonna make a surprise prediction over here. I'm just gonna go for Sweden. Yes I am. Spain against Finland. So Finland had, uh, sorry, Spain had been knocked out in the round of 16 by an underdog team in the World Cup. Will the same happen in the Euros? It would be an extremely bold prediction going for Finland over here. Should I go for Finland? No, I think I'm just going to go for the favourites over here. I'll go for Spain. Oh my God, that's England and Germany. If this happens, it'll probably, probably be the a match of this entire around the 16. England versus Germany. This one would be extremely, extremely close. You could say two teams that have improved since the 2018 World Cup. I'm going to go for England. Yes, I'm going to go for England. This one's going to be very interesting. I can already see Spain versus England in the next round. But yeah, for this one, I'm going to go for England. Next up, uh, Ukraine and France, how I really feel for Ukraine because I think they had the potential to be one of the dark horses for the tournament but then France are the world champion, they've got probably the best squad in the world, it's no joke, they are France and they missed out on the Euros last year, they will be looking to win it this year, I'm gonna go for France. The last matchup in uh, the round of 16 is Turkey and Denmark. I've already explained why I think that Turkey do ha will have a good say in this tournament and this is the reason why I will go for Turkey ahead of Denmark. We move on to the quarterfinals and already we can see some very exciting fixtures lining up starting with Belgium and Italy. Oh my god, this is Already, the, one of the reasons why we love the Euros, so many good quality teams. Belgium and Italy being two of them. I think both of them have got great, great squads. I think Italy has got a great manager. I, I'm a really, real big fan of Mancini. Uh, they've got some good attackers as well. The midfield is quite good. Jorginho in there. The defense is quite solid. You know, Italy is one of those teams who have moved on from one era to another. They've got a young squad now. They had an extremely old squad with Bonucci, Chiellini and all of that till say 2018. But then they did fail to qualify for the World Cup and I think the changes that the Italian board has made have been quite good. I'm going to back Italy to win this one. People would think that I'm uh, backing Italy a bit more than, you know, 
their squad deserves or something. I just got this feeling that Italy will do quite well in this tournament. Italy have been one of my, you know, that kind of teams which aren't exactly underdogs or dark horses because they are good footballing nations. But then they aren't uh, also mentioned in the same sentences as, say, uh, France and England and Portugal, which people do think are the favourites for the tournament. Moving on, Portugal and Sweden, the next matchup. Whew, I think this one will be close, but then again, Portugal, they've got a lot of quality in their team. I don't see them getting out in the quarters this time out. I'm going to go for Portugal ahead of Sweden, which makes up a very interesting semi-final match between Italy and Portugal. We'll move, that, uh, we'll, we'll move to that in a while. Before that, we've got Spain versus England and France versus Turkey. Right then, Spain, England. I just feel that England are, you know, this match will be between two of the best footballing nations, you could say, in the world. Of A lot of Spanish players are playing in England. It's probably, you know, La Liga versus Premier League as well. So something, two of the best leagues in the world. I just feel that this year, with the kind of depth, the kind of quality that England do possess, I, I also feel that Spain's attack is not the most impressive right now. Yes, they do have the likes of Ferran Torres. Uh, it's, I think, Gerard Moreno, if I'm not wrong. So, they are a decent team. But I think the quarterfinals will be the end for them in the tournament. I'm going to go for England. And the last one, I'm going to go for the favourite choice of France, the defending world champion ahead of Turkey. Yes, this is what I'm going to go for. The semi-finals. So according to my prediction, the last four teams in this tournament are going to be uh, Spain. I'm so, not not Spain. I'm sorry. It's going to be England, France, Italy, Portugal. Now having a bit of discussion in these matches, Italy versus Portugal is going to be really interesting. I have backed Italy a lot, but Portugal just feel that to win a tournament like this, you need first squad depth. I think Portugal's squad depth is greater than the Italians. You need big game players. Portugal with all of these, you know, you've got Cristiano Ronaldo and also other players like Bruno Fernandes, who's not necessarily performed in big games. So I think that, you know, Portugal are definitely a better side than Manchester United. So uh, he is a quality player. They've got quality defenders all over them. Ruben Diaz of contender for the Ballon d'Or, as many suggest. You know, with Pepe being there, Joseph Font. I just, I'm very impressed with the Portugal squad. And uh, yes, I'm going to go for Portugal over Italy in the finals. I did back Italy a lot uh, in some really tough games, especially with this one. I think Italy versus Belgium, me going for Italy would be really controversial. But yes, I'm going to end Italy's dream run in the Euros till the semis where Portugal make it to their second consecutive final. Now, will it be England or will it be France? If I do go for France, it will be a you know, repeat of last Euros finals. You would feel that a match between England and France would be really very close. The only reason that people would write England off at this stage would be uh, because, you know, the past history that is attached with England with them, you know, kind of bottling these international tournaments. I've heard a lot of people say statements like, if England could not do it with a squad of Lampard, Gerrard, Scholes, Terry, Owen, Scherer, so how do you think they'll do it with a squad of the current existing players? I don't think that statement makes a lot of sense. I think that England do have uh, players now who also have exposure of foreign leagues with likes of Bellingham, Sancho, I also think that uh, they've got a very deep squad, as I've been mentioning time and time again. I think England need... The only issue where I can see England is uh, their over-reliance on a particular centre-back called Harry Maguire, because his injury, his fitness is a bit of doubt right now. If Harry Maguire is unfit, according to what many people have suggested, England might have to shift to a back five. If England do fit, uh, shift to a back five, do, do they have the quality box-to-box -box midfielders? I think Declan Rice is more of a defensive one. Miss Mount, especially the way that he's played for Chelsea, is more of an attacking mid now. I just don't feel he's best in the pivot. 
So do England have these kind of players? But then it's all about the fitness of Harry Maguire, something that's completely unknown to me. I'm going to go for, should I go for France? You know what? I'm going to go for a bit of a surprise here. I'll go for England. Yes, I'll, I'll go for England. It's definitely no bias involved here because, you know, I, I don't will I'm not even a European, I'm an Indian. You could say that I'm probably supporting England because it has many Chelsea players, but then the same also goes with Germany, which also has three Chelsea players, all three are, of whom are expected to start. England, you could probably see Mason Mount starting. Chilwell would definitely not start. And even Reese James, you would feel that Kyle Walker or Kieran Trippier might give in, be given a start with them. Regardless, we move on to the finals, which is Portugal versus England. Whew, this would be a really, really exciting final. What am I going to go for? If I go for England, then I'm definitely going to get a lot of hate because people are going to be like, come on, England winning an international trophy is next to impossible. You know, with the fact that Liverpool winning the Premier League happened last year, why not England winning or an international trophy? But then again, if you look at Portugal, you look at the squad, you look at the big game players they have, you look at all the experience that's vital. I think experience will have a big say to it in this game because if you look at England, they've got a lot of youth players. That's a good part, but then players need to keep their uh, minds in control for such a big game. I think England don't exactly have a very solid goalkeeper. The likes of Mount, Foden, Rice, all of them are under 23 players. If you look at Portugal's squad, you've got the experience of, say, a Pepe, uh, Rui Patricio, Cristiano Ronaldo. Right then, I've made up my mind, and according to me, the winner of this game is going to be... Yes, I am going for a second consecutive Euro win for Portugal, third international trophy for Cristiano Ronaldo. I just feel with the entire squad they have, right from the goalkeeper, Rui Patricio, experienced backline of, uh, say, Pepe, also youth and coming off a great season, Ruben Diaz. You've got Joao Cancelo, Ricardo Pereira, Rafael Guerrero. Even in the midfield, you've got Joao Martino, you've got Felix, you've got Andre Silva in attack, you've got Cristiano Ronaldo, Bernardo Silva. Just, I could keep naming these Portugal players for ever and ever because their sport, I think, is as impressive as England's. I think they've got, uh, you could say, a better manager than England. They've also got more experience than England. They've definitely, as a nation, got a better history with European tournaments than England. I definitely think that England will have a better say than Portugal in, say, the World Cup or probably the next Euros. But for this Euros, I'm going for a Portugal win, which would be the second consecutive win for Portugal. So that was my prediction for the Euros. Uh, thank you for listening till the end, if you're still here. For more top quality football content, keep listening to the Football Parliament podcast. Thank you.